we of course need to discuss how often you should be taking rest days in your overall workout routine. Now, this is gonna depend on a lot of different things, so stay with me here, uh, because it's not a one-size-fits-all answer. So, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, what kind of activities you are doing? Are you doing a really, really high-impact cardiovascular activity? Are you doing some weight training? Are you doing sports? Uh, what kind of sports are you doing? Are you doing a sport that involves a lot of running? Are you doing a sport that is mainly sitting? Are you doing a sport that has intermittent, um, basically, times of work, kind of like golf where you're just swinging once and then you're walking for a little bit? Um, a lot of these types of activities, um, I guess I should say higher impact sports, have extremely high recovery costs. So. A recovery cost is basically where you might need to do more on the rest and recovery aspect than somebody who just goes out for a 10 minute walk every day or a 30 minute walk every day. Obviously, if you are somebody who is doing weights and a recreational sport, they're going to have to focus on their recovery more and their rest days, they might have to be a little more diligent in actually planning them out so they don't lead to those overuse injuries, that mental burnout, and can adapt long term. So a good thing to ask yourself when thinking about this is how trained are you as an individual? So high level athletes must do more work to actually achieve more results. So they need to do a lot more than what they started with as a baseline to get to a bigger, stronger, and faster body for themselves. Okay. So here's the interesting thing about it though, and where it's kind of the double-edged sword with athletes is that they also need more recovery. They need to focus more on recovery, I should say. So this is a really tough thing where we need to be balancing rest days um, very, very carefully. So um, the overall balance of your rest days will depend on a few different things. One, how well you recover generally. You've probably known somebody who can literally go run a super large amount one day come back, you ask them to play some pickup basketball or something, and they can play that no problem. And then after that, they go do a two hour wait session because they just simply feel like it. These people, generally speaking, have good genetics for recovery. So they may be able to kind of get away with more and ultimately um, not need to rest as much or have rest days that are quote unquote as resty, right? They might be able to do more on the rest days. However, if you're like me, um, who has built up to having a uh, decent fitness over time, I'm definitely uh, by no means amazing in my fitness capacities, but pretty decent fitness. I don't have the best of recovery genetics, so I have to be a little more diligent in realizing that day to day my body isn't quite as good as I would hope. Um, so just being a little more diligent and realizing kind of your physical limitations uh, based off genetics. Um, and then also when considering the balance of rest days is what kind of workouts you do. So of course, as I discussed earlier, you know, a 30 minute walk and a two hour weight session with a recreational sport is not created equal in what you need to do for overall recovery costs. So consider that as well. And then also consider how experienced you are with the modality of workout that you're doing. So if you are really, really experienced with a modality, you might be able to do it a lot more. You might be able to have a higher frequency of that workout or of doing that thing with maybe not as hard of rest or as diligent of rest. If you are somebody who, let's say for example, I'm gonna use swimming. Um, if you are somebody who's never done swimming before and you go out and decide that 
uh, hey, I'm just gonna go do a really long swim today. The next day, you are probably going to feel completely swamped and completely gassed. And to be completely honest, this is something that I've experienced too. Uh, there were times where I would just decide to play some pickup basketball and the subsequent days after that, when I had my normal workout routine, my normal weight training session, I literally could do half of the normal weight I did. So I didn't recover that well from that basketball game because my body wasn't used to that type of physical activity. So if you're more experienced with a, a workout program or an activity, you will likely be able to recover more because your motor patterns are more built up, your body's just used to being able to recover from that thing. So for most people, just generally speaking, three to four rest days per week is ideal. Now, this is, again, I guess, taking from somebody who might be lifting three to four times a week and maybe they're doing cardio two to three times a week. A, if you think about it, if you kind of work that out through your overall week, if you're stacking the cardio especially, you would have roughly three to four days, um, depending on if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, you'd have a few days to kind of interplay your rest days, right? Um, something that I like to do, as I just discussed, is to lump my cardio and weights together so then I have a complete rest day from doing absolutely nothing. Some people also like to do their cardio on opposite days of their lifting days. So they'll technically not have a full rest day, but maybe they'll have a rest day from doing uh, cardio. So they'll do weights one day and then they'll have a rest day from doing um, weights and then do cardio someday. So those are a couple different ways to kind of go around um, implementing some rest days when you're thinking about it. Um, the one thing I want to say is that you might feel like you need more rest. You might have been extremely run down at work you might have a bunch of stress from your relationships. At the end of the day, we need to listen to our body. And this isn't to say that we shouldn't just push through things uh, sometimes because, you know, we're not always going to be feeling amazing. But there are some times where that uh, feeling, you know, is not a normal fatigue. And if that's happening to you and you're about to go work out, Maybe consider doing a little bit less of a workout, doing a different type of workout, a lower impact workout, or, you know, worse comes to worse, just skipping that workout. Um, if you are somebody who normally does your workouts and is consistent with things, skipping one day is not going to make or break you. And in fact, that rest day could push you even more into the next workout to do even better. We're not talking about one workout. We're talking about multiple workouts. We're trying to stack these and those rest days can help us do that. So go ahead and give this video a like if that gave you some good value